Over the years, I've witnessed many, many amazing things when I've been stalking carp. I love stalking, it gives you a really, really good insight into the way fish behave. Uh, and obviously you see some really quirky stuff. And probably the most quirky thing I ever saw was when I was stalking a fish called Malins at Raysbury One. Now at that point, Raysbury One was 120 acres. It had 45 or so fish in it. Uh, and several of the big ones were very well known and very sought after. And one in particular for me at that point was a fish called Malins. I'd been on his case for several days. I was following it around, I was watching it. Uh, and I'd had a couple of opportunities when finally it all seemed perfect. I located the fish sitting in a big snaggy bush and about 20 yards to the left of that snaggy bush was a little poke hole which I've been putting bait in and the spot was looking polished. So I crept up there, got everything organised, put a few broken boilies in the spot uh, and sat back and watched. After about 20 minutes, a fish, maybe a 20 pounder, wasn't a big fish, a mirror came into the spot, dropped down on my baited area, had a little snuffle about, took a few bits of bait and then headed off through the marginal snags and it, I followed it on foot so I could see it through the marginal trees as it went and I could see it really clearly and it swam into this big marginal snag where Malins was sitting up sunbathing and it went up to the fish and it just gave it a proper thump straight into its side. Malins, this big old female 40 pounder, got a little bit agitated and she swam round in a bit of a circle and then this other fish led the fish, the 40 pounder, all the way back to the spot. Now I promise you, I couldn't believe my eyes. It was almost like it had gone up to it, gone, oi, fatty, there's some food down here, check this out. They swam together, the smaller fish went down on the feeding spot, right in front of me, I could see everything really clearly, took another mouthful and disappeared and it left a big 40 pounder, sat there going, oh, happy days, look at this food. It started feeding, just as quietly as you liked. I unhooked a rig, waited until the fish was facing away from me, and I lowered my rig in, and in slow motion, the fish turned round, ever so slowly, turn, 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 in went my rig. I watched it in crystal clear, perfect, perfect 3D vision. Everything was immaculate. It come up in the water, shook its head, lead come up off the bottom, gotcha. And at that moment, as I was just about to step through this tiny little poke hole, I slipped, the rod went up in the tree, the line got caught around a branch, the fish shook its head, thrashed, snap, bang, and off went the fish, and I fell into the lake, and my moment was gone. I was absolutely gutted. But to see that little bit of interaction between those fish, it just goes to show they've all got really interesting characters. And as a fish farmer at VS Fisheries, and, and a, a keeper of fish and carp in particular for a good number of years, you see that character in them all the time. They're all very, very different. So if you're after a particular fish, try and suss out what it likes doing, where it lives in the lake. Is it a transient fish? Does it move around the whole lake? Or does it like to live in a certain area? And in particular, does it get caught in a certain area at a certain time of the year? And if it does, that's where you need to be fishing. Give it a go. Good luck.